Today I'm going to show you the wonders of PNG. First thing you want to do is open your editing program, that's the one I'm using. Then open a picture, which you can see I've already done. After you've done that, you go up to this little icon. Then you trace the picture that you want to make into a PNG. And then uh, you hit delete. And voila, it's gone. Now, if for some reason you hit delete and he disappears, then what you need to do is, here, since I've already done it, it won't let me, let me do a new section. Yeah, see this little bar? You open that up and you hit invert. And then it'll let you, uh, instead of him disappearing, the background will disappear, which is what you want. Okay, so now we're going to save as a, a PNG file instead of a JPEG. And there's the option. So we save it. Now I've already done it, so it won't let me do it again, which is fine. Now, we need a new one. Okay, interesting cast of characters. Ah, yes, here we go. I always thought these guys were separated at birth. Here's my chance to prove it. All right, so if you drag it over, there you go. Now, for some reason, it doesn't move. You right-click and see if it's locked. Mine's not. That's why it's moving. But you can lock it or unlock it right there. Move it around. Also, make sure it's on the blue arrow. If it's not on any of those other tools, it won't let it move either. And you can see this device allows you to spin it. It's a really cool tool for other things, too. You can shrink evenly by using the corners. If you use the sides, it'll reshape it. So, if you don't want to reshape it, stay away from that. Just use the corners for resizing. And that's how you can do a picture on a picture. Be standing next to a famous celebrity like Pat Cadell or The Count. Okay. Now, there's another effect you can do while it's still separated. You can do a transparency effect. Control how faded it is with the opacity. You know, some programs only call it opacity. This one calls it transparency. You see you have the two layers here. Those are the working layers. At the bottom are the ones, um, are the masters. The top ones are the ones you're working with. Okay, so I'm going to trace the count just like I did pack it down. And you see that little blue in there? That will make it look really bad. So you can do one, two, and go back. Of course, that only works if you're clicking over and over and over on the mouse. If you hold it solid, it'll follow you, but when you undo, it goes all the way back to wherever you last clicked. And you you want to be inside the figure more than outside, because if you're outside at all, it'll really show up. Oops, too far. Let's go back. Undo, undo. Very good. And boom. Now there's a little blue in there, but we're not going to worry about that for this. Okay, I go up to the selection. Hit invert, if need be. Feather just reshapes the, um, the outside line. Makes it thinner or thicker. Then you hit delete. Oh, see, wrong one. Undo, invert, click, hey, look at that. Save that baby as a PNG also. Make sure you switch it, save it. You'll see there was only one picture because that's the only other PNG file. And so you can just do undo and bam, you're right back where you were. And you still saved the PNG file. It's really cool. Now we're going to do an effect for how to create depth and more layers. So you copy, paste, right click, bring to the front, lock, that way it doesn't, you just trust me that's a good idea, and see, now it creates the illusion that he's in front and Pat Cadell is in the back. 
Now, if that's not a good enough effect for you, there's some tricks to improve that. There it is. You go to Blur, go to Gaussian Blur, and then you can fade him, and look at that. Totally creates the illusion of depth. But before we do that, just to be on the safe side, let's make a copy of that. Set it to the side. Because once we make once we do the blur, it's we're stuck with it and we can't undo it. So let's let's have a, another one just in case. See there's the one that warns you you can't undo it. Okay, look at that. Look at that artificial depth. And you could do a whole bunch of different layers of different things. Uh, and you can see how the top layer works. It's easier just to do one, too. And lock. There you go. Drag him around. But you can do different stuff, uh, different levels of Gaussian Blur to just really pump up the illusion of 3D effect. It's not as good as Adobe After Effects, but you know what? It's free. Now, if you say, oh yeah, you can also change the colors. That's kind of another really neat feature. It helps a lot if you're going to add a picture into a picture where, you know, the, the picture's shady or whatever. You can go and use the contrast features over there on that toolbar on the left and adjust it. Make it darker, lighter, whatever you need. So I'll put that up there like the Count's having a bad dream. Ooh, it's behind the ear. What if you want it in front of the ear? Well, if you want it in front of the ear, you just take and redo it over there. And then save it. Give it that clever name of the count too, so it doesn't erase the original. You really don't want to make those mistakes. Yeah, and this is the so the top ones are important because those are the ones you're actually working with. So if you want to do any painting, make sure you choose it before you go to the paint, or it won't let you. So watch this. See, it's only on the back one. It does overspray though. It's kind of a thing I haven't been able to figure out how to resolve. It's the wonders of PNG. Thanks for watching.